In this video I want to show you how to improve your old wireless router. With another operating system of course, in this case DDVRT. <laughs> this router by itself has everything that is sufficient for normal operation. It supports wireless N technology, it has gigabit LAN and runs relatively stable. When I say relatively stable, I mean that every month or two, depends on how much it has been loaded, it tends to hang and needs to be rebooted. And this is one of four reasons why I want to upgrade it. I need the so-called keep alive option, which is basically an option where I can schedule a reboot. Another option the router misses is the wake on LAN, which is an option that most computers support and means that I can send a command from the router that will turn on a particular computer that is turned off and connected to the network. The third option that the router is missing is bandwidth monitoring, which means that I can monitor bandwidth directly and live on the router. <clears throat> and the fourth option is a bonus option, SNMP, where I can use advanced monitoring software to monitor uptime, bandwidth errors, etc. This operating system has many advantages. I have named only four that are at this point important to me. So what do I need for this? I need an old router, its power adapter and one LAN cable. Once it has power, the router now needs to be connected to the computer. For the sake of stability and security, I do not advise you to do the update via wireless. Connect the router with a cable instead. After I have connected the router, the next step is to download the new firmware. I need to open the following link in the web browser. I will post the link in the description of this video. Click on the router database and enter the model of your router. As you can see, I have a choice of four revisions. Now, let's look at the device label on the bottom. What it says, what revision do I have? And as you can see, I have the 1.8, which means I need to download the 1.x. One important thing about the 1.8 version of this router is to pay attention to the serial number of the device. So if you have uh, WR1043 version 1.8, where the serial number starts with 1, 2 or 12, then the firmware flashing procedure is different. I will post details about that procedure on the HEPIC website or forum. It is also very important to know that if you choose the wrong version, your router will probably no longer be able to turn on or boot. Where work carefully and check everything three times. Now I click on the version that suits me. Here we see that I have choice of multiple versions of the beta branch. I will choose the latest version currently available. It is also very important in such cases that you first check what other people say about the version you need. Check have there been complaints about that particular branch. Always make sure that there have been no current problems, especially if the version has recently been released. That means checking which is the most stable. I have three files to choose from. I download all three, even though I need only one. The first is clear from the name itself. It says web revert to stock, which is a file with which you can restore the device from DDVRT firmware to stock firmware. The other two represent DDVRT firmware. Now that I've downloaded the new firmware, I'm turning off the wireless on my computer to make sure I access the router via LAN connection only. Now I access the router's control panel via web browser. Now I'm backing up the current configuration. I do that in case I need to go back to factory firmware for whatever reason. In that case, I would not have to reconfigure the router, I just load the backup configuration.
In the DDVRT documentation, I read that it is recommended that the device be restored to factory settings before the upgrade. So that's what I'm doing. I also advise that you always write down your current firmware version before upgrading. You never know if you will need it. Now I do the same thing as doing a classic firmware upgrade. I use the regular web update option of the route. So I'm going to system tools and firmware update. I select one of those three files I downloaded, which is factory to DDVRT file and click upgrade. I need to make one clear. This is an unofficial firmware for the router and no one will be responsible if something goes wrong but you. And if you break your router, so you do everything at your own risk. In the event of a power failure, your router will not complete the update and will be bricked. If you unintentionally touch the LAN cable and the connection is interrupted, your router will not complete the update and it will be bricked. If you use a wireless link to update it and your connection breaks, your router will not finish the update and it will be bricked. So, there are a million ways to brick your router, be careful. And as you can see, right after he threw out that he had completed the firmware upgrade to 100%, the new operating system asks me to define the new administrative username and password to access the router. After I've entered the required data, I click change password, it immediately transferred me to the device status overview, which means the upgrade of the new operating system was successful. Please note that on some router models, after firmware upgrade you have to reboot, reset the factory settings or even do a hard reset of the device. You have to check this for each router model individually. In my case it was not necessary. I will show you some of the basic configuration of the new operating system. I first define the scope of the local network. Always keep in mind that you have to choose a scope that is intended for private use. I set up a subnet, I set the local DNS. Since I have a local DNS server, I enter its IP address. And of course, the default gateway is my internet service provider's router. And I click save. After changing my IP address scope, I open the web control panel under the new address in another browser. I now define the DHCP start address at 30. It means that DHCP will start assigning from the third IP address up to 50 addresses in total if necessary, which is up to the 80th address. All other addresses can be used as static. I leave release time as it is, which is 1440 minutes. I'm setting up the Wi-Fi. I put it in access point mode. I select NG mixed networking mode. I select the wider 40 MHz range because only then I will be able to get wireless speeds up to 300 Mbit. I choose the last channel in the series because in my close proximity everyone uses channels between 2 and 8, so there is much noise at those frequency ranges. And here I was wrong. Because in order to get the higher speeds I have to choose a channel lower than the 7th, so says the DDVRT instructions. <clears throat> I corrected this afterward. Now I named the wireless network. Now I'm setting up the security, choosing WPA2, Personal and Tiki IP. But I did this wrong too, because it's another factor that later prevented me from achieving speeds up to 300 megabit. I corrected this later on too. The right setting in this case was WPA2 Personal and AES. To summarize this, on this router with DDVRT operating system and the version I downloaded, I was not able to achieve wireless speeds faster than 54 megabit, until I set it to NG Mixed Mode wide 40 MHz range on a channel lower than the 7th and protected by WPA personal with AES. Now I'm going to allow port forwarding, which means I open some ports from the one or you can call it outside. Actually that are actually only VPN ports. I do this so that I can use my VPN client to access my internal network even when I'm not home. Now I'm configuring to keep alive. To be specific, the router scheduled reboot. In this demonstration, I configured it to reboot every Monday at 4 a.m. in the morning. 
You see one very nice feature here, which is bandwidth monitoring. It allows me to see how much bandwidth is currently on the VAN port, on the wireless network and on the LAN ports. Here I can keep track of how much data was uploaded and downloaded on a given day on the VAN port. There are a lot of other options in the DVR team, just to name a few, Vivid Survey for instance or Spectral Scan. Another video is in the making explaining some of the benefits of DDVRT, so stay tuned. I did not show anything about Wacom LAN and SNMP, I plan to dedicate special videos for those topics. Enough of me in this video, so click subscribe and that little bell to get notified when a new video is uploaded. If you like this video click the thumbs up, if you didn't then don't. If you have any questions post them in the comment section. So, thanks for watching, until the next video.